Today's shout out is for Zoldinga. Riku vs Arcades, Nikya, and the Ur Dragon. One lander is an easy decision on the mulligan. Into a two lander with a three visits, Jaska's Will, Salon. We've got plenty of ramp in this deck, so shouldn't struggle getting into mana. Turn one play from Arcades is Perimeter Captain. And we draw into a Mull Drifter, so go for the Traskal land on turn one. And an Uvenwald Tracker for the Gruel player. Riptide Turtle for the Defenders player. And still haven't got into a land, unfortunately. This time is Azuri's Predation, so three visits. Worst case scenario, we'll just have to go for Jessica's Will next turn and make a bunch of mana into Psalm Simulacrum. If we're lucky, we can get down a Treasure Nabbit as well, because the Ur Dragon has just gone for a Sol Ring. We get our first token from the Forgotten Orchard, and the Ur Dragon goes down to four cards in hand after playing a Skull Clamp. Earthcraft from Nikia, and the Tracker swings into the left. Arcades throwing out a Rampant Growth. So the highest cards in hand now is 5 for the Jessica's Will, so yeah, we could maybe try our hand at drawing into a land with the Mull Drifter, but it would be much more preferable if we get a land off the top here. Okay, and that's Besaju, I'll take that. So play the Besaju, and we'll leave our opponent with a Sol Ring for now. We'll get down the Solemn Simulacrum. Insight being played by the 5 colour player now. Whenever an opponent casts a green spell, draw a card. That should be pretty good in this table against 3 green players. Not worthy that he did miss a land there, unfortunately. Nikia has been given a spirit token by the dragon player, which is not necessarily a good idea when there's an earthcraft in play. Able to generate more mana now. Beast Whisperer will draw the dragon player a card. And it seems as though Nikia might be missing a land as well. And the first commander is Arcades the Strategist. Again drawing the Ur-Dragon a card. And the more cards this player has in hand, the better the Jessica's Will is for us at least. Alright, a Curiosity Crafter... Could drop that down and then swing in with this and draw a card. Yeah, we could go Jessica's Will here. Six mana made by this means we can get down the Treasure Nabber with three mana left, ready for the Curiosity Crafter. And this can swing in to draw a card and try and make a land. Yeah, don't like losing out on the Jessica's Will when we're not using it as card advantage as well, but I'm not thinking of rushing down Riku anytime soon, so we'll go for the Jessica's Will to make six mana. So yeah, let's get this into play now. Could hard cast the Mull Drifter, I suppose, but yeah, maybe that is a better idea because how many tokens are we going to have for the Curiosity Crafter over the course of the next few turns? Not necessarily a lot. We could refill our hand with that after something like Azuri's Predation. So yeah, let's just go Mull Drifter, actually. And we do manage to get into a land as well as a Mythos of Aluna. So that could become a copy of this thing and we could draw a bunch of cards off that. Anyway, get down the land and pass. Okay, Blasphemous Act, apparently going to wipe the board before we can steal anything with the Treasure Nabber. We will draw a card to the Solemn at least. And that gets us into Dockside Extortionist. Not too many artifacts and enchantments in play at the moment, but I'm sure it'll come in handy, especially when we can make token copies of it. We may just go for the Riku next turn. Torian Mauler from our opponent, and we will have a Spirit token under our control, so... Again, the Curiosity Crafter might be relevant. Skull Clamp goes on the Mauler. Arcades being played again. Putting a plus counter on the Mauler and drawing to this. Okay, a Grim Monolith. Don't think we need to play Grim Monolith. I think we're fine to just get down the Riku here. Because next turn we could get copies of this. And make maybe a Sol Ring and an Insight. Maybe a couple of Insights. So drawing our opponent a card again, another plus counter on the Torian Mauler, we can chump with the Spirit token. Sword of Body and Mind for our opponent will be pro green and blue, so we'll have to be careful who he gives these colourless spirits to. Giving a colourless spirit over to Nikia. <laughs> and then a Wheel of Fortune. Well, we've got a full grip anyway, I do like the cards in hand, so... Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer. Maybe should have got down the Grim Monolith, but wasn't expecting that. Kozalite was discarded by the Ur Dragon. Didn't get to look at his graveyard there, but I'm surprised that he has an Eldrazi in the deck. We just draw into a fistful of lands. That could not have been a much worse wheel for us. That will change the outcome of the game. Incubation Druid for Nikia. And then tapping down the Incubation Druid into the Earthcraft straight away. Doing the same with the Spirit. Not worthy, a Castle Garenbrig is now in play. 
So a Burnished Heart makes it to the field. Wall of Runes for the wall player. So drawing a card to Arcades, deciding to scry afterwards from the runes. And now an Angelic Shield. So creature's going to get a further buff to their toughness. And then our opponent sacrificed the Angelic Shield in order to bounce Arcades back to the hand. We're seeing another board wipe here. Alright, a non-land card please. Preferably one that can get us back into this game. Okay, awesome, and Arcades decides to just quit on us. Alright, Garrick's Uprising is not going to draw us a card. It's not going to draw us any cards anytime soon. Get Field of the Dead out before we see another secret wheel. And that will trigger straight away. So I think holding up the Beast Within in order to make copies of that should be fine. We'll just pass. Rin Seri looks as though this might be Tribal Tribal. Did play against a similar deck on the channel, not sure who the user was. Might have been the same player. Anyway, Avian Changeling coming down now. And we are going to get another Spirit Token. A Dog and a Cat Token going to be made thanks to a Changeling being cast into the Rin and Seri. And now going for a Skull Clamp onto the Dog with the remaining mana. I think now's a good time to try and deal with our opponent's card draw here. That will trigger the Insight and the Torian Mauler. And we'll make a copy with the Riku. So Insight and Skull Clamp both going down. Was obviously hoping to get a copy of the Insight. But it wasn't to be this game, unfortunately. So now punishing us by swinging in with the 9-9. We can chump that all day. I'll chump with the zombie. It might be that they get pro black on a sword. Now that they're showing us that they have at least one of the swords in the cycle. Sacrificing the Burnished Heart to make some more lands. And then casting a Far Haven Elf in order to ramp a bit more. Five cards left in hand. Alright, now drawing into Amphi Mutineer. So we can exile some stuff with that at least. Won't trigger the Garrick's Uprising, unfortunately, because it's one power shy of that. Drop the Polluted Delta and crack it to make a couple of zombie tokens that we can chump block with. So if we want to play this, it's going to be six mana to play and copy it. So that means that we can't go for Garrick's Uprising or hold up the Ottawara, but I think we need to progress our board if we can. So with Amphi Mutineer, we will get rid of the Rin and Seri. And then Riku of Two Reflections, we might as well. Yeah, we're not going to hold up. Ottawara, let's just go for Simic Mana to make a copy. And it's not worthy that we do have to exile a non-Salamander token, so as much as we'd like to sacrifice this, or exile this, it is a Salamander along with all other creature types, so cannot target that. We'll go after the Incubation Druid before it gets its counters. And we'll leave behind a couple of 4-3 Salamanders on our opponent's side of the field, so plenty of tokens to go around. And if our opponent's swinging at us, it may well be worth throwing the Amphi Mutineer away, because we can get Encore on it to get more copies out. Authority of the Consuls will bring creatures into play tapped, which could be relevant against us with Field of the Dead in play. Then Maskwood Nexus is going to switch off the Amphi Mutineer, because it will turn them all into Salamanders. Path to Exile goes straight onto the Riku. So we will get to ramp and make a zombie at least. And everything's swinging in towards us. So we've got a couple of 3-3s, three a 4-3, two, 2-2 two Flyer will hit us. Um, could gang up on the Torium Mauler, but it's probably worth just chump blocking that for the rest of the game. So we'll throw the original Amphi Mutineer under the Salamander, like we said, so that we've got a chance to encore it at some point. And then the other token can trade with a Beast, so we're taking 5 damage to a Beast and a Flyer. Giving a Tapped Spirit over to the Gruel player. And then just passing the turn, not making use of the mana he tapped. Putting some mana through Castle Garenbrig in order to uh, make six mana for creatures. So in comes Nick here, meaning that we're not going to be able to get down the Garrix Uprising anymore. Luckily this is a largely creature based deck. And throwing down a tapped Wood Elves in order to ramp further. Followed by Duskwatch Recruiter, which could be a means of card advantage. Good thing to have him play with Earthcraft, because it means at the end of a turn, if you've got untapped creatures, you can put the mana into this. And we see a Treasure Nabber on this side of the field instead. Only one rock in play, still that Sol Ring over there. At least someone gets to steal it. Okay, beginning of our turn, and huh, that is a Clone Legion. So now, what, do we hold up the Ottawara in order to bounce this thing? Can we get down our commander as well? Play a land. Field of the Dead doing some work for us here. Yeah, we've got exactly enough to get down our commander and bounce the Nikia with the Ottawara. So we're going to have to give our opponent a turn with four cards in hand, unfortunately, but let's go for this. Oh, for some reason I've got it in my head that it's stopping us from casting non-creature spells. It's just my opponent that can't cast them. 
Yeah, okay. So, in that case, we'll get down the Garrix Uprising. Ready for the Clone Legion. Glad I double checked that. Yeah, we'll get down the Garrix Uprising now. So that we can Clone Legion into that next turn. And hopefully get some big powered creatures to draw some cards. Won't swing in with our 1-1 and 2-2 Tramplers. Sword of Body and Mind goes on to the now 1919 Mauler. Treasure Nabbit is going to trigger once the Soul Ring is tapped. And then we see a Sword of War and Peace, so protection from red and white. Just missing protection from black, thankfully. We'll be able to get straight through to this player, though, for a hell of a lot of damage. Alright, but decided to spread the damage, apparently. This being equipped up with the Pro White and Red. So we get the Flyer. The Mauler goes in at the right. Okay, so we go down to 28. It'll be a further point of damage from... Or further four points of damage from the War and Peace. And this player down to 19, about to mill a bunch of cards. Forbidden Orchard going to give us the tapped spirit token. It seems as though he's just tapping that every turn in order to hand spirits out. Bunch of mana able to be made by the Nick here this time. So at Duskwatch Recruiter being activated. And revealing a fierce empath for a tutor. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to dodge a crater hoof here. But that's probably what's incoming. Would be nice to get at least one more turn. Activating the Recruiter again. And whiffed on that one. Activating it again. Showing goes Oracle of Moldaya this time. And then seeing Felden of the Third Path. Earthcraft on tapping lands. And casting the Oracle of Moldaya. We see a Nykthos on top. I'm not sure if my opponent can play that or not. Hopefully not. Uh, no, he can. Revealing a myriad landscape on the top with the Oracle. Has Devotion to Green of 6. If he wants to tap down the Nykthos. Still has the Castle untapped as well. Playing that Fierce Empath in order to tutor. And went after a Terastodon with that, so... Even if he goes after our Riku, I'm not going to be too worried about it. Keeping hold of this would be preferable, though. Gore Claws on top now as well, after the shuffle. Oh, it's non-creature permanent, so it can't blow up the Riku anyway. That just means that it's more likely that it'll go on the Garrix Uprising. Probably blow up a couple of swords as well. Anyway, Felden of the Third Path now coming into play. So now casting the Terastodon, the uh, Torium Mauler is a 23-23. Yeah, so definitely don't mind getting a couple of copies of Terastodon. Even if they do come into play tapped, it would be great if this thing gets blown up so that our stuff comes in untapped. And they are targeting the authority of the consoles and the two swords. So we get to keep this. Best case scenario for us. Some lands being untapped to the Earthcraft, which continues to do a hell of a lot of work. That's the one of the first things I'll be blowing up. Three cards in our opponent's hand, and he's managed to do a hell of a lot this turn, thanks to the double mana. A duplicate, and you would assume that would go on Riku, but might go on this thing, because he's scared of it getting trampled or something. He is pretty much tapped out here. And yeah, he's spreading the love going after the Riku, unfortunately, so would have been nice to get down two Clone Legions, but one should do. Alright, so not seeing a Kray Hoof win. Defense of the Heart might be a bit too slow, but... If we don't draw into anything else, we might be able to sneak it down. We're not paying the two mana into copying the Clone Legion, so... Yeah, let's point it over here. By far the most relevant creatures on that side of the field. No means of token doubling or anything like that, unfortunately. Like we saw before, the wheel really slowed us down, so... You'd expect the Clone Legion to be much more scary than this, but... Should get a decent amount of work done regardless. So we've got... A Terastodon trigger, Fierce Empath, we can search for something, Farhaven Elf. Duplicant can exile something, we only get three draws from the Garrix Uprising, but it's better than nothing. So let's go draws from Garrix Uprising last. And the client's really bugging out here because of all the permanents that are in play, so hopefully the client doesn't crash. Then we'll get the tutors on the stack, because we want to get the lands and stuff out before we make draws. And then Terastodon can go definitely after the Earthcraft. We want to blow up the Maskwood Nexus as well because we don't want all these things to be... Uh, what was the creature type? Salamanders? Yeah, we don't want them to be Salamanders. Keep the Amphim Mutineer relevant. And we'll blow up the Nykthal Shrine to Nyx as well. And then we'll force our opponent to swallow up mana next turn by getting down the Nykia. You get rid of our commander, we'll get rid of yours. There is a Dragon Brood Mother on top of our library. Gore Claw still on top of our opponents. We get to search for a forest with the uh, Wood Elves as well, which will be an untapped land. So we've got Breeding Pool we can grab. Still a Tiger as well, so got both of our colours left available. Grab a basic. 
which triggers landfall on Field of the Dead, of course. And we are shuffling, so changing the top cards of our library. Search with the Fierce Empath for a big creature. And there aren't too many artifacts for a Cavern Horde Dragon, which is the risky run with having that in your deck. So I'm just going to go for the Tashana. We can play that next turn and hopefully draw a bunch. So we've got all of our colours available. We can get a red in with the mountain if we want to. So Tropical Island should be fine here. Obviously not sure what we're going to draw with the Garrix Uprising. But did want to minimise the number of lands we draw. But apparently failing at that. Drawing to a land. A Sakura Tribe Elder. Pretty poor draws for us this game. <laughs> and another land of course. Rapid Hybridization is on top of the library. I don't think we mind shuffling that away. We do have double mana now thanks to having a Nikia in play. Although thanks to that as well we also can't get down Defense of the Heart can we? So best shuffle away that Rapid Hybridization. We'll go after the Tiger with the Wooded Foothills. And this will continue to trigger for zombies. And now an Ancient Tomb on top meaning that we can actually play the Tushana. And we're best doing it now I think before the board gets wiped. So play out the Ancient Tomb. And yet another land on top in Barlaged Sanctuary. Alright, well if we draw enough cards then surely we'll dodge lands eventually. Play the Tushana. And it's not worthy that if this thing gets unblockable somehow then it will be able to take out either one of us. But we have to play to our outs here. Garrick's Uprising draws us into yet another land but Tushana's going to draw us even more. Alright, leaving us with 34 cards left in the library. Make that 33 to the Garrick's Uprising. Uh, Mana Crypt, we can't cast a lot of our, or any, of our non-creature spells thanks to the Nikia being in play. We just needed the double mana, but that does mean that we're hindered on what we can actually play here. Oh, and that player decided to scoop, alright. Um, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, the game's not over, so yeah, really shouldn't be scooping here. So in that case, we'll just end the turn with the Sakura Tribe Elder. And we'll hope that our opponent can't do too much to us next turn. We'll have a means of gaining trample on all of his stuff thanks to the Gore Claw, if he can get haste on it that is. Eternal Witness is on top of our library now. We have a My Elder on top of our opponent's library now, making 6 creature mana from the Castle Garenbrig. Doesn't have his Earthcraft available anymore so even if he gets his commander down, not necessarily going to be able to generate enough mana. An Imperial Recruiter will get him a tutor though. And now seeing a Bane of Progress from our opponent, nothing we can do about that. Um, it's just the Garrick's Uprising that gets blown up here anyway. Oh, there's a duplicate as well, which I don't think we really care about. So if that's all our opponent's got, I think we should be winning next turn. Not sure how many basics are left in the deck, but I don't particularly care about E-Witness on top anyway, so we'll gain an extra mana for next turn with the Sakura Tribe Elder. Alright, just one basic forest left. And Sakura Tribe Elder instantly replaced with a zombie token. Goldspan Dragon is much better anyway. Although, I don't think we need it. So I'll definitely make use of our opponent's commander here, thanks to all the ramp that it's going to give us. Blasphemous Act on top of the library. And I think the first thing that we want to get down is our Mana Tripler in Nyx Bloom Ancient. And that enters, so then it's in for Terror of the Peaks, and I think we all know what happens from there. Each of our lands tapping for 4 mana. Play the Goldspan Dragon. That enters and hits our opponent directly for 4 thanks to the 4 toughness on the Goldspan Dragon. Uh, we can make a copy of the uh, Terror of the Peaks with Progenitor Mimic so we'll do that. Progenitor Mimic will make a copy of the Terror of the Peaks every turn and it enters as a copy itself so once again it is 5 damage this time. And then what's the biggest creature we can play? Probably the Old Norbone so we'll get that in and that will be enough to deal with our opponent. Yeah, so our opponent scooping there should have taken the damage. <laughs> but yeah, the game had gone on quite a long time. The Old Norbone enters and it triggers both of the Terror of the Peaks for 14 damage to our opponent. So yet another example on this channel of why you don't scoop even when the chips are down. Had a really good hand there and got it absolutely decimated. Actually couldn't have drawn into a worse hand than we did. But one good top deck was enough to turn it all around, so... Hopefully you all enjoyed this Riku performance, even though Riku didn't stick around for very long, I don't imagine he'll tend to in this deck. If you did enjoy it, then please leave a comment below, and a big thank you to the patrons for their financial support of the channel as well. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.